Masks in Corel Photo Paint work similarly to placing a stencil over a piece of paper. Masks enable you to isolate areas for editing while protecting the remaining areas from any changes. There are several mask creating options, including the Smart Selection Mask, which is new to Photo Paint 2020. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial. For a simple example, I have a document with an imported photo of some donuts. The photo is the active object. I'll open my mask flyout and choose the ellipse mask tool. I'll drag to place the mask shape approximately along the outline of one of the donuts. This moving dashed border is the mask marquee. The mask isn't perfectly located, so I'll activate the mask transform tool where the options in the interactive property bar include position and size, rotate, scale, and more. I'll keep the first option, and I can drag the mask to a different spot, and use the handles to tweak the mask to fit. By default, what's inside the mask is what I can now keep or edit. When I choose Mask, Mask Overlay, the red overlay marks what I can't access while the mask is active. I'll click Invert Mask to reverse what's inside the mask, and now it's the donut that can't be touched. So when I press Control X, everything inside the mask is cut, and only the donut remains. I now need another mask along the donut hole, which isn't perfectly round. So I'll use the lasso mask tool, carefully trace around the hole's edges, and double click when finished. I'll press Ctrl X to cut out this part of the photo. I want to use this object in another document, so I'll use Ctrl C to copy the donut. Now I'll open my bakery shop image, paste in the donut with Ctrl V, resize, and place. I can use copy and paste to sprinkle more donuts in this image. For my second example, I have a photo of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, placed above a photo of a clear sky. The tower photo is selected. There are a few ways I can mask just the tower. I can use the magic wand mask, in normal mode, with a medium tolerance of around 50, and drag the mouse to include the pixels I want in the mask. This leaves some areas I want to remove, as well as areas to add. I'll lower the tolerance and switch to subtractive mode, then click in the background to exclude those pixels from the mask. Then I'll switch to additive mode and click the bits along the tower that had been excluded before. This method works well to mask the tower, but now we also have a faster and easier way to get the same result. I'll click the Remove Mask icon and activate the Smart Selection Mask tool, which is new to PhotoPaint 2020. In normal mode, I'll use this nib size and drag the mouse within the tower. When I release the mouse, the mask includes the entire tower and none of the background. Smart Selection includes an edge detective algorithm, as well as machine learning models to identify and include colors in a selection. The mask includes only the tower. So if I apply an effect, such as Effects, Color Transform, Psychedelic, the effect is applied only within the mask. I'll cancel this effect and invert the mask. Now it's the sky inside the mask, to which I can add a noise effect. Or, with the mask still active, I can press Delete to remove all pixels inside the mask. This allows the photo below, with the clear sky, to show through. Finally, here's a beautiful example of how masks can be used to create quite complex compositions. To start, I have all objects turned off except for the background photo of a snow fox. I'll turn on hidden objects one at a time. The two brighten objects lighten the background. The fox object is a copy of the fox itself, which could have been created with the smart selection mask or the magic wand mask. The fox bottom half is another clipped object blended with the background image of pine trees. Then come three clip masks, each using a different part of the fox and blended in different ways with the pine tree image. And finally on top, there's a grainy layer of snow painted in spots around the fox. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on masks in Corel Photo Paint. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also download a written copy of this tutorial.